Lake Chisholm, five minutes. Pretty good time today. Yeah. Say, fellas. Oh, excuse me, miss. Fellas, you know where a man can buy a pair of shoes around here? Well, are you going to a wedding or something? I just came <laughs> from one. It's cute, isn't it? The well groomed groom. Where'd you leave the bride? I knew I forgot something. <laughs> Must have been some wedding if you ran right out of your shoes. Well, you know how it is. Suddenly it hit me. Gad, you can't send a mere boy up in a crate like that. Uh, this is the road to Memphis, Tennessee. Well, what's in Memphis? I don't know, but I'm going to find out. <laughs> and Voltaire thought that the only adventure open to the coward was matrimony. A man of letters. What are you doing in this enchanted village? Well, now, he is a college man, but long as he does a full day's work, we don't hold it against him. 
America. Mm -hmm. What country are you from? You ever hear of a wasteland called Hollywood? Vaguely. That's all you need to know. Well, listen, I'll be seeing y'all. Oh, is there a shoe store in town? I'm just about ready to start walking on my hands. Well, there uh, might be some work shoes over there by the general store. If you like, I could show you the way. I'd like. Hey. Your bus is going to be going in about two minutes, mister. Yeah, that's right. Hey, where are you going, mister? There's not another bus for three days, you know. you were going on to Memphis. Well, as you said a moment ago, what's in Memphis? There's a hotel around this town. Uh, is that a foolish question? This is a sort of a boarding house where I'm staying. Home cooking, spoon bread and corn pone, hog jowls and hominy grits. Hot ziggity dog. <laughs> we got to get on back to work. Come on, Todd. I'll ask Mrs. Phillips if she can put you up for a couple of days. Handmade. Espositos of Beverly Hills. $85 a pair. And always burn your bridges in front of you. What is that supposed to mean? We got a room we'd be right glad to let you have. I mean, my folks. <laughs> well, I insist on paying, of course. Oh, you don't have to insist. Boy. Haven't you ever heard the saying, don't judge a man until you've stood in his shoes? Come on. Back in the days of 49, great grandma was in her prime. She picked up her things and the kids right glad and headed for the west with great granddad. Great granddad built a house so sod by hustle and bustle in the grace of God. Just as he was finishing the roof, a cyclone came and the house went poof. Well, go ahead. Go ahead. Didn't mean to disturb you. The priceless musical heritage is dying out a little bit every day and nobody cares. I heaven, I wish I had my tape recorder with me. Where'd you get one of those? Mister, this is a general store. You take traveler's checks? You sign them, I'll accept them. All right. Yeah, I need a few other things. Um, shoes. Uh, You got any of these with leather patches on the elbows? Mister, these are brand new. The noise you hear in the background is a cotton gin. Gin, as in martini. I don't pick it, Buzz. I gin it. Well, there's nothing to it. A fellow named Skeeter's been showing me the ropes. Real bright kid. He knows more about cotton than a bull weevil. How are they treating you? Girls? Is that all you've got on your grubby little mind? 
Yeah, there's one, but she's uh, kind of off limits. Listen, aren't you interested in anything else? Uh, opportunities for industrial expansion, ecological balance, domestic political trends. <laughs> yeah, you too. All right, buddy, take care of yourself. Yeah, Buzz, I'll see you soon. Bye-bye. How'd your buddy? Well, he's bare enough. He's beginning to ask about girls again. I told him the only interesting girl in town was already spoken for. I ain't so sure about that. What is he doing with that thing, anyway? I don't know. Maybe it's something he does for a living. You know, he stopped my old grandma yesterday morning, tried to get her to sing him a love ballad. Now, what kind of a thing is that? Maybe he's a student of folklore or folk music. It might not have any value to you, but it might to a collector. Coming down here to study us dumb southern country yokels like some animals in zoo? What are you so touchy about? He hasn't done anything. I figured you'd see it his way. What are you doing here, anyway? Working. Same as you. No, not the same as me. I'm gonna live and die right here in this county. And if times get tough, I can't just pick myself up and move along. I have got roots. Well, how about White Christmas? No, 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 that's Tin Pan Alley. I want something authentic. No, I don't, I don't know what you mean. Um. what they mean when they say you took the words right out of my mouth. Now, how do you suppose Gershwin did his homework on Foggy and Bess? Well, not with a tape recorder. I and mean, this place doesn't bear much resemblance to Catfish Row. That's a mistake all you young city intellectuals make. You're looking down your noses at plain old country folks, as if they hadn't made just as much a contribution to American culture as no, they... It certainly didn't take you long to pick up the accent. Accent? It's not they who are the foreigners here. It's us, you and me. Julian, these people aren't noble savages. They're just plain, ordinary farmers who are darn glad at the end of the year to have a sewing machine or a television set to show for all their sweat. Now they're close to the soil. They're in touch with the things that really count. The earth, the sun, the rain. As Jefferson said, those who labor in the earth are the chosen people of God. And I'm the man that's gonna sing their song. You got that beat? It's kind of crude and obvious now, but still it does have a, an honest, primitive, rugged, American grassroots type of vitality, don't you think? Hey, 
blessed few places left in this country with an authentic cultural heritage that wasn't manufactured in some air-conditioned rabbit warren on Sunset Boulevard. And that's what I'm here to capture. Capish? treat in store for you right now. I like another big hand for young talent, someone who grew up in your very own midst. The one and lovely Miss Elva Dupree. Miss Elva's going to regale us a little song she learned at her mother's knee. Or some other such low joint. ask you something. Let's go right ahead. All the worst I can do is uh, punch in the nose. A little while ago, when you were up in the bandstand, it looked for one minute like you might be making fun of these people. Todd, boy, is... you got any conception of what this place means to me? Well, you know about Gauguin. How you give up everything, everything, wife and five children, for what? For a place where he wouldn't feel stifled. The moment he saw Tahiti, he knew that this was it. Perhaps the one place in the entire universe where he could function as an artist and as a man. Julian, you can't pick cotton in Tahiti. Huh? I've ordered $40 worth of music paper from Memphis, and I'm not budging from here until I fill up every line of it. With what? Well, I hope this country is big enough for more than one Gershwin. Well, let's see if we can catch a ride into town with some of these people. Well, four. It's only a mile and a half. You ought to walk more. The best exercise there is. No wonder American youth is getting so flabby. Well, I have a feeling there might just be a couple of fellas up here waiting for you. Oh? Yeah. 
I got the impression they wanted to beat you up or something. <laughs> Me? Why <laughs> would anybody... Oh, I get it. You do? Yeah, you. It's you they're after, isn't it? What'd you do, make eyes at one of the little native damsels, huh? Julia, it's, it, it's uh, kind of surprising coming from a fine, clean-cut young fella like yourself. You ought to know better. These type of girls are not for you. Julian, it's not me they're after. And now you latched onto me because you think I might help to get you out of it, huh? All right, all right, I'll do what I can. We castaways among the savages have got to stick together, don't we? Show the flag! Teach these foreign beggars where we draw the line. What? Hmm? But you got to promise me one thing. From now on, you keep your nose clean. And no more fraternizing with the natives. Julian, will you lift? Julian didn't come in a... Gentlemen, friends, hidden cotton of the idea of you and your good folks extending their hand of hospitality to a poor, friendless stranger. What did they do to you? Oh, we just sort of went round and round. And, oh. I, I guess we did each other a little bit of damage. Oh, those no account packaged juvenile delinquents. Some of his buddies, horny-handed sons of the soil, one and all, beat the daylights out of me this afternoon. Who said I was fighting? They did all the fighting. I didn't have to lift a finger. Yeah, you guessed it, but the trouble is I'm not even interested in the girl. I was protecting a fellow American in distress. Look, you want to call me Dr. Schweitzer, don't do it on my nickel. Wow. Monsieur Gauguin just walked in. I'll talk to you later. Hi. Hi. My professor Juilliard wanted me to be a concert pianist. Then long came Hollywood, that happy hunting ground where young artists go to die. Where everything comes so easy, art, love, money, even death. Um, are you very angry with me? Forget it. 
If I'd been able to, I probably would have jumped on the truck with you. No, no, you wouldn't. You're one of those rare ones who always stands his ground, no matter what the odds. The eternal Spartan. Me, I'm a moon jumper from way back. One of those happy few whose life is one long string of vacations. Only I don't go home in between. And the moment always comes when the walls start pressing in, and I can't function anymore. And that's when old Julian has to hit the road again. Do you understand that? Where does the road lead? Where? Well, Tahiti, of course. Julian, why tell me all this? Why? Because there are times when, when a fellow needs a friend. Funny how I had to hit you to get through to him. Hysterical. Now, Todd, I want him to cut mud out of here and leave us be. Skeeter, he's an artist. Well, what does that make him, something special? He looks at a town, he sees the raw material for a work of art. What do we see? Well, I don't want to be raw material for no man, and my girl either. He needs this place, Skeeter, don't you understand? If you run him out of here, you could destroy what might be his life's work. Look, me and Elva have been going around together for 19 years, and she never even looked at another fella until that clown stepped off the bus. Now, you tell him for me. If he stays here, it'd be like money in his pocket if he was never born. you hanging around. I'm in love with him. So now you know. I guess I never gave you much of a chance to find out about other men. Oh, ain't your fault. You are what you are, and he is what he is. Oh, I didn't think I'd ever be able to say all this to you. About loving another man and all. Why not? I've loved you 19 years. Guess you're entitled to some time off or good behavior. Not now, please. Please. Miss Wilbur, I gotta talk to you. All right, this minute? I I'd be much obliged if you'd open up this door. Yes, Mr. Dupree, what can I do for you? Well. Oh, uh, I'm terribly sorry. I lost track of time, as you can see.
Mr. Roebuck, I don't know how to say this, but I guess you better leave. Leave? I can't. I, I couldn't possibly look. Mr. Roebuck, that poor child's been up all night, crying her eyes out. I don't have to tell you for who. Oh, Mr. Dupree, I assure you, I, I swear to you. Well, I, I guess you didn't mean to encourage her, but all I know is that child's been lying down that room of hers like a sick calf, eating a poor little heart out for you. I'm very fond of her, too. She's been a positive joy and inspiration to me in my work. I think you better go away from here. But, Mrs. Dupree, I, I just can't break off now. Another six or eight weeks, and for the first time in my life, I might have something to show, something I'm not ashamed of. It's all because of what I found here. This place, these, these wonderful people, your daughter. There'll be a bus coming through here tomorrow, about 11. Mr. Dupree and I, we want you to be on it. Mrs. Dupree. May I have the honor of asking for your daughter's hand in marriage? That ain't what I come in here to talk to you about. Would you let me ask you, please? In your presence. Elba? Elba, honey, come in here for a minute. He says he wants to marry you. Here we go. How uh, soon? Oh, Julian. As soon as I finish my work, I, so, so I can concentrate on... And when will that be? Julian. One, three or four weeks. A uh, couple of months at the most. Oh, Elba, that ain't no reason to forget how you was raised. Silver. What is it? Well, I baked you some cookies. I thought you might be hungry. Feel them, they're still warm. Yes, sir. What is it? You can see that Julian's very busy, can't you? Julian, you ain't hardly talked to me all week. Well, I told you before, the sooner I finish my work, the sooner we'll have something to talk about. You're still going to marry me, ain't you? You still love me, don't you? I am. You're not going to turn out to be one of those nagging, sniveling, demanding Hollywood wives, are you? Oh, honey, I swear I won't, as long as you just talk to me sometimes. You know, you said I was the right kind of a wife for an artist, didn't you? Didn't you? Yeah. Because I let you work, 
and I didn't carry on like them sinful no account girls in New York or Hollywood, remember? Yes, dear. I, uh, I, I remember every word. You can make me marry your daughter by keeping me a prisoner here? Ain't nobody gonna force you to marry Elva. Wouldn't let you marry my daughter if every hair on your head was gold. You wouldn't? Well, what's the problem then? Why, why wouldn't you let me get on the bus? Get in here and sit down, honey. If you left now, she'd go after you, or try, anyways. Poor, lovesick little pup. But you're staying right here in town. Now, you go ahead, you finish your work. Finish writing your opera, or whatever you call it. Making sport of the simple country folks around here. Ain't nobody gonna make you do nothing. Except try to leave town, or go near my daughter. You can't keep me here against my will. You're insane, the whole lot of you. All I've got to do is go to the police. Want to call him? Sheriff's name is McKee. He is my wife's cousin. <laughs> Aunt yeah, Barbara, can you stay right here with us? Till Elva is as sick of the sight of you as you seem to be of her. Breakfast in my room at 9.30. Alone. I like my eggs sunny side up, basted. And no hominy on the side, if you please. Bless you, child.
Hello, chicken. <laughs> Your father yesterday thought I was trying to run out on you. Uh, reckon you did too, huh? Well, you know what I said to myself? I said to myself, if a marriage can't be based on trust, it ain't worth starting up in the first place. Trust? But just what do you think I was going to Memphis for? You mean you weren't trying to run away? Busy day yesterday. Yeah, well, you know how the hillbillies get when they feel that the honor of the tribe has been impugned. Now, come on, Julian. This isn't Dogpatch, and you're not a little Abner. Well, for your information, Dogpatch, Kentucky, and Lake Chisholm, Tennessee, both happen to belong, ethnically speaking, to the Southern Appalachian Complex. You don't want to believe me? Ask the blushing bride. Hell, honey. You tell this young man why I want to go to Memphis? Congratulations. Julian says we're going to live in Hollywood, right next door to Hollywood and Vine. Uh, you run along and get lunch, huh? He's going to pick us up at 1 o'clock in the morning. We'll have breakfast in Memphis, pick out a diamond ring, come back with a marriage license and time for dinner. Right. Bye. You stink. God, boy, I'm fighting for my life. I, I can't work anymore. I'm drowning. I'm crying out for help. Maybe I shouldn't have asked to marry her, but she was the only store I could find to hang on to. What gives you the right to make this girl your life preserver? Well, an artist has a duty to his vocation, a duty to protect himself. You don't agree? No. You want to go through all that sweat and agony to express yourself, to be an artist, maybe starve like a dog, maybe make a million bucks, all right, that's fine. You go ahead, but do it on your own time. Don't put up fake palm trees wherever you go. The world isn't Tahiti, Julia, not even on Christmas. Uh, late Mr. William Faulkner would disagree with you, sir. He allowed this how an artist has the right, even the obligation, to be ruthless. Is that so? I can't remember the exact language, but he seemed to feel that if your grandmother were dying and at the same moment you had an inspiration for a great poem, it was your bounden duty to sit down and write that poem. As he said, uh, an ode on a Grecian urn is worth any number of old ladies. Not to me, it isn't. Oh, come on now, please don't take it so personally. So while the old lady is croaking in the other room or your wife and kids are climbing a wall, how can you be sure the blank space in front of you is going to turn out to be a great work of art? And even if it is, one day in the life of one human being is worth more to me than all of your Grecian urns. I'll be in front of the house at midnight. What are you going to do when I don't show up? As for me tomorrow, you'll find me a grave man. Hamlet. Julian, even if you were drowning, I'm not sure I'd want to help you. <laughs> Dear boy, it's not for me, but think of Elva, that sweet, vulnerable, unspoiled little country girl. Can, can you imagine how many kinds of pure hell it would be for her to be married to someone like me? You know, Julian, I'm beginning to think I really don't like you. Of course not. A type like me should be run out of town. Well, I appeal to your sense of civic responsibility which I'm sure is much greater than mine. Be in front of the house at 12. I thought she'd never get to sleep. I swear, I never saw anybody so clinging. Maybe she loves you. Did you ever think of that? Uh, like a cat loves a mouse. You don't look much like a mouse to me. A mouse has character.
Water in that lake. You don't suppose by any chance he could have made it across. Who knows? But if he did, there's a body of water somewhere in the world with Julian Roebuck's name on it. Screen Gems film presentation, Herbert B. Leonard, executive producer.